It's time to put it all on the line. Cards are out, put the chips down. It's time to gamble everything that you have on putting yourself in the championship four at Phoenix Raceway. Race number one of the round of eight all kicks off with the NASCAR Xfinity Series coming up later today right here on the CW. This year, this is Sport of Speed. I'm your host, Devin Henrys. We gear up for NASCAR Championship Weekend. Now is more important than ever. Every win that you get a chance at is a chance to solidify your name in the championship for Phoenix Raceway to drive for a championship. Everything we have going on here is gearing you up for those 50,000 fans screaming for drivers' names for a shot at glory and a shot at the record book. Before we start rolling the dice in Vegas, let's take a look at what we have on today's show with our starting grid. We go beyond the fire suit with NASCAR Hall of Fame nominee Greg Biffle. His heroic actions as Hurricane Helene rampaged North Carolina, now flying in his own helicopter in isolated communities helping out families stranded after the impact of Hurricane Helene. Kerry Ostep is hanging out with Larry Fitzgerald, the Arizona Cardinals legend was at Phoenix Raceway introducing students from Luke Elementary School to the world of STEM and how it impacts the world of NASCAR. And we're heading back out west to Las Vegas, so of course we're gonna hang out with NASCAR's two Arizona natives, Michael McDowell and Alex Bowman, as they give us some hometown tales and what they miss most from living in the desert. A career year one year ago, six wins led all of NASCAR. And we thought that Hendrick Motorsports' William Byron had a real shot at winning the NASCAR championship. But the championship four race at Phoenix Raceway said no. This year, he's poised to fight for that title again. And he might become one of few to join the exclusive list of being a Daytona 500 champion and a NASCAR Cup Series champion all in the same year. We sit down with the North Carolina native to talk Legos and also trying to fight for that Bill France Cup. Let's ride the inside lane with William Byron. Your resume is growing at an insane rate. That Daytona 500 championship. You have a die cast of a character from Disney Pixar cars. You were on Lego Masters. This resume is exploding right now. Do you have any just wild, crazy dreams that you're hoping to add to that resume here in the next couple of years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say just trying to add a championship would be awesome. That, that would be the next step. Well, right now you're doing pretty good at that. Three top three finishes in the round of 12, including your 100th career top 10 this past weekend at Charlotte Motor Speedway. What has it been about this team this year that tells you you guys got a chance to claim the championship this year? Well, I think we're just kind of plugging along like we normally have. Uh, last year, we, we finished 1-2-2 uh, in, the, in the round of 12 and um, made it to the championship four. So really similar results this year. and. I feel like we've just got to keep plugging away and keep doing what, we're, what we've been doing. And we're going to Las Vegas Motor Speedway, a track that you've won in the past, but it feels like almost with this next-gen car, winning that track doesn't guarantee that you're going to be successful when you visit it again. So what is the key to maintaining consistency at a mile and a half like Las Vegas and try to get that win early? Just lock yourself right into Phoenix race number one. Yeah, I mean, that, that that's a good point. I think that the setups evolve each time you go back to the track and and the feel of the car is is evolving a lot um as we run it more so i feel like that's probably why uh you don't see some of that but um yeah i think i think you'll have the same guys up front on sunday that that normally are um and hopefully we're in that mix in following las vegas we're heading to homestead miami speedway back to florida a place that i'm sure has some brand new memories for you here in 2024. You have a shot to be the sixth driver in NASCAR history to win the Daytona 500 and the NASCAR Cup Series Championship. I'm sure I'm like the 500th person to tell you that so far this year, but I want to look back purely on that Daytona 500 win on a Monday, a magical day, anytime they're able to take home that trophy. What hits you the hardest looking back at that day when you walk back in those gates this summer, going back to the place where you wrote your name in history? Yeah, I mean, it was great to, to get back there in August and um, and see everything. It'd be, uh, yeah, it's it's such a, it's hard to reflect during the season, but, um, you know, getting a chance to go see the car and, and everything at, at Daytona in the, in the summer race was really cool. 
And now a 13-time Cup Series winner, including all those memories back at the Daytona 500. But if you could have one NASCAR racetrack turned into a Lego set for yourself, which racetrack are you picking? I would do Bristol. I think Bristol Ooh. would look awesome. I think uh, you could build that in a little, I think you could build that like a stadium. Um, so it would be uh, be really cool to, to see that one as a full-size Lego. So obviously, like you said, it's hard to reflect on something like, like the Daytona 500 win during the season. You guys are so zoned in trying to make it to that championship four and win that title. How in the world do you decompress? Is that your time, just spending time with Lego to take your mind off of things? How in the world do you decompress during such a stressful time during any of the playoffs? Well, I think you just don't do anything different than you normally would. Um, you know, try to, try to do things that you would uh, normally enjoy. And I feel like as long as you structure your schedule well and, and you're organized and, you, you know, planning ahead, um, it, you're going to be in a good spot come Sunday. And, and really, it's all about once you get in the car and focusing um, as hard as you can then. And before I let you go, obviously we're in Arizona, the home of your teammate, Tucson, Arizona's Alex Bowman. I have to know your thoughts on the nickname Slick Bill Byron. <laughs> That's a funny <laughs> one. Um, yeah, my dad goes by Bill, so I try to I try to avoid Bill, but um, he gave me that nickname, so now now people ask me. On the other side, Greg Biffle and his heroic actions following the aftermath of Hurricane Helene in North Carolina, going to save and bring supplies to stranded families up in the mountains in western North Carolina. And Kerry Osep is hanging out with Larry Fitzgerald at Phoenix Raceway introducing students from Luke Elementary School to STEM in NASCAR. And sit down with NASCAR's two Arizona natives, Michael McDowell and Alex Bowman, give us some hometown tales from their time in the desert. All of that on the way on Sport of Speed. Please hold while we connect you. Hey, uh, what's What's going on? I can't get anyone on the phone at my bank, and they don't have any branches nearby. I think your bank has you between a rock and a hard place. Oh, granite! Does your bank do this to you? No. Desert Financial's top-rated mobile app makes you oh. feel like a rock star. They have over 50 locations and treat you like a VIP when you go. That sounds a lot better than this tight squeeze. <laughs> Join today at desertfinancial.com slash your way. This is a Santan Ford announcement. Santan Ford has over 1,600 new cars and trucks in stock. All models are priced for immediate sale to make room for more arrivals. Don't wait. Head to Tim Hobie's Santan Ford in Gilbert. We are Santan Ford. Nothing brings people and families together faster than sharing food. Great friends, memories, and good times. For over two generations, Valle Luna has served you the food that brought you together, and we've been proud to do so. We're fortunate to have been a part of so many stories, gatherings, and traditions that continue on today and will tomorrow. Start a tradition of your own. Come taste authentic Sonoran-style food with your family and friends here with us at Valle Luna. We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. Now, <laughs> 
Kick off the model year in savings at Bird's Volkswagen. Final 24 Tiguan's are on sale. 0% for 60 months and $2,000 bonus cash. For final Jettas, only $22,935. Kick off your model year at Bird's Volkswagen Baseline and Country Club. Hi, I'm Jody Jackson. I spend a lot of time on the baseball diamonds, but my favorite diamonds are right here at E.D. Marshall Jewelers. They have the largest selection of beautiful diamonds in every size, shape, color, and price. Hit a home run this season with the perfect engagement ring. Come on, fellas, get off the bench and visit E.D. Marshall Jewelers at Scottsdale Road and Shea Boulevard. Since 1971, E.D. Marshall Jewelers, best quality, best selection, and best price. <laughs> hey, uh, what you working on? I'm trying to find a bank I can feel good about. Kind of looks like you're doing rocket surgery. Yeah, they have all kinds of requirements and don't give anything back to their customers. It's really hard. Oh! You know, when you join Desert Financial, you get a rewards program that offers a cashback bonus, and there's no hidden fees with your free checking. It's really easy. Nice. I think I'm going to need that bonus. Join today at desertfinancial.com slash betterbanking. In today's Beyond the Driver Suit, we're taking a little bit of a different approach. We're not talking about one of the current drivers in NASCAR. We're talking about Greg Biffle. Right now, he's a NASCAR Hall of Fame nominee and a legend of the sport. Also, a North Carolina native who firsthand saw all the damage and all the craziness of Hurricane Helene. To this day, there are still nearly 100 people missing from the disaster that took place more than a week ago. When the hurricane first touched and first started to spread away, Greg Biffle saw the damage and hopped in his helicopter, started flying supplies, help, and also satellite internet and phone calls. So those trapped beneath destroyed bridges, collapsed power lines and collapsed trees could contact their families. Doing the job of a hero, Greg Biffle still today is helping all of those affected by Hurricane Helene. Let's go beyond the driver's suit with Greg Biffle. Nearly a month has already passed since the destruction of Hurricane Helene first hit land in the United States. Over 200 deaths and tens of billions of dollars of damages have been attributed to the storm's wrath, and in North Carolina, nearly 100 people remain missing. But even as the clouds began to disperse, no one was quite aware of the devastation the storm left in western North Carolina, as the only roads to escape the mountain terrain communities were whisked away or destroyed. I had no idea at that point in time how devastating this storm was. And I don't think anyone did because I hadn't heard about it on the news, really. NASCAR legend and Hall of Fame nominee Greg Biffle was one of the first people to jump into action on his own helicopter, putting his own life at risk to search for stranded families. I get a text from Stephanie from Victory Air that said, hey, do you want to go flying today and a link to the Facebook post of a family that was stuck up in Banner Elk at an Airbnb. Unfortunately, I'm very disappointed. We were not able to get up into the mountains where they were. We got within nine miles of them. But I've got food, water, blankets. I will absolutely get anybody out I can. The, we're gonna try again tomorrow. When I got back and landed, the viral video or the social media post exploded. Within just 20 hours of Biffle's first successful mission, the operation exploded from a couple of individuals to 20 volunteer civilians searching for stranded families and delivering countless supplies in places that only helicopters and fixed wing aircraft could reach. Chaps. The team continued to grow and ended up flying up to 165 missions per day per airport. So what started out to be rescuing one family that was stuck up there turned into 4,000 messages of my family members I haven't heard from them, my brother, my sister, my neighbors. Multiple reports estimate it will take three to five months for power to be restored to communities across the Carolinas, with snow already beginning to fall in the area. Many of those stranded had no way of communicating with the outside world through cell phones or internet services due to the destruction, leaving them with no method to let loved ones know they were okay. Biffle and other civilian volunteers would fly to these locations, set up a Starlink system to allow people to contact their friends and family, and take that and fly to the next location. 
We reached out to a friend of ours, Bob Mack, that's on the board of Polaris, has a friend on the board of SpaceX. They facilitated 300 Starlink units. I think the call went in about 3.30 in the afternoon. By five o'clock, we got confirmation we were gonna get the units. So at 6.45 a.m., in the dark, a truck pulls in with 300 Starlink units. We unload them, load them on my truck, straight to the airport, and in the air on the civilian helicopters to search and rescue, first responders, community centers, larger communities that were isolated. While there are countless people to be recognized for their heroic services in a time of desperate need for thousands across the Carolinas, a large part of it was started by one post of one man just trying to help those in need during an unprecedented moment in history. I don't want to make any comparisons and take away from catastrophic events, but I feel like this is as big as Hurricane Katrina, and it's so widespread, but it's just so hard to see because it's from South Carolina all the way to Virginia. The camaraderie between the American people to help one another and, and expect nothing in return, just simply send their helicopter, send their stuff out to, to help a fellow American or help a fellow comrade that needs help. Uh, it gives me hope to see that, that, that so many people are willing to just help one another. Gary Osef here at Phoenix Raceway, and you know, we're all just kids at heart, right? Well, while I play this game, I'm also with Luke Elementary kiddos who not only got a chance to experience NASCAR, they also got to meet one of their football legends, Larry Fitzgerald. I got to get you guys! <laughs> yes, this fits. Trading his speed on the field to focus on keeping kids in the fast lane thanks to his foundation of nearly two decades. I, I feel like that's, that's my responsibility now, to be able to, to inspire and motivate and push the next generation because, you know, there is a, a Larry Fitzgerald, there, there's a future uh, uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in this crowd. These kids, they, they have no fears. Like, they feel like they can accomplish anything and everything. And so our goal is just to, like, put gasoline on their fire, like, accelerate it, be able to give them that, the, put the wind beneath their sails and help them go achieve what they hope to achieve. One of Larry's biggest achievements, the Larry Fitzgerald Foundation, paired up with the home of NASCAR's championship weekend, bringing students of Luke Elementary School to the track to learn the connections between racing and STEM. I think once kids get the opportunity to see that, it allows them to even dream bigger on how they can integrate in other things. It's not just about being a driver, it's about learning STEM, you know, and knowing that math and science play a very big role in all the things of the world. So they have interactive stations like this will let them do something they really love to do, but be able to experience what the drivers get to go through every day. So like just meeting the kids where they are um, and, and it bring them in along and teaching them in that way. And so like, I just lo I love that. This beyond the finish line field trip offered firsthand opportunities centered on the science, technology, engineering, and math behind NASCAR. <laughs> All while showcasing one of NASCAR's top destinations. And of course, there was quite a bit of fun. It's like I'm actually doing the like racing on the racing track. Maybe the most exciting part was having the chance to meet and interact with the former speedster and future Hall of Famer himself. Although he won't admit it. We're much more excited about going around the track. <laughs> even, even at slow speeds. Yeah. As for the whole gaming and racing thing, Let's just say it's not for fits. I'm terrible at video games. Like I, I'm terrible. Like my kids, Bevan and Nepal, they be wearing me out and Madden and, and FIFA and 2K. Like I, I'm like I'm a test dummy at home. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with Larry. I'm gonna leave the racing for the kiddos and for the professionals. But that will do it for us here at Phoenix Raceway. I'm Cariosa for Sports 360 AZ. I'm gonna keep practicing. Larry Fitzgerald is a no-doubt first ballot Hall of Famer in 2026. And all of these NFL Hall of Famers owned a NASCAR team at some point in their lives. But do you know the only one who actually went to Victory Lane as a NASCAR team owner? It happened with the NASCAR Truck Series team. And he actually took the checkered flag three times in 2009, with Mike Skinner behind the wheel for the final three victories of his illustrious truck career. And that race-winning car owner was none other than Randy Moss. Sport of Speed returns 
after this. This is a Santan Ford announcement. Santan Ford has over 1,600 new cars and trucks in stock. All models are priced for immediate sale to make room for more arrivals. Don't wait. Head to Tim Hovick's Santan Ford in Gilbert. We are Santan Ford. What would you need to experience life in full motion? Expertise to provide the best care, unsurpassed training and technique. It requires the best orthopedic surgeons. Ortho Arizona. Ortho Arizona and my journey. My knees were shot, so I had double knee replacement and I needed one of the best in rehab. Ortho Arizona encouraged and pushed me in the process. Go to orthoarizona.org. That's orthoarizona.org. Yeah, what's, what's going on? I can't get anyone on the phone at my bank, and they don't have any branches nearby. I think your bank has you between a rock and a hard place. Ah, oh, granite! Does your bank do this to you? No. Desert Financial's top-rated mobile app makes you oh. feel like a rock star. They have over 50 locations and treat you like a VIP when you go. That sounds a lot better than this tight squeeze. <laughs> Join today at desertfinancial.com slash your way. Before we say goodbye, we're going to Las Vegas. We're back out west. We're back in the desert again. So I caught up with NASCAR's two Arizona natives, Michael McDowell and Alex Bowman, to ask them what did they miss most about living in the desert and other hometown tales. Number one thing that I always ask is what you miss most about Arizona, but every single Arizona driver always sells me Mexican food. So I'm gonna skip to the next part of that. What Mexican dish do you miss the most? Uh, red chili burro enchilada style with no garnish. It's a beat. 100% it is a Sonoran enchilada. I love that like you and Michael like instantly like knew exactly what kind, not just like burrito, taco, like you guys knew exactly like what your favorite dish was. The most underrated part of living in Arizona. Um, that you could wear shorts in the winter time. But most people know that. Yeah, EG's or uh, there's another sandwich place called Baggins, also super good. Your least favorite part of when you lived in Arizona? Um, probably rattlesnakes. The weather. Um, summer, middle of the summer, working out at the Bondurant School, 125 degrees in the middle of the desert, feeling like you're close to death. <laughs> if you could take any of your teammates, crew members, whatever, and do a tour of your hometown, where would you be taking them? Probably he, to where I grew up, um, probably so my house, and then um, the go-kart track, and then I would show them the path that I used to ride my bike to get from my house to the go-kart track over the dam, like Nico's Taco Shop, and then EG's, and then Baggins, and just food. It's really just food, man, it's bad. 
What about, can you tell me something, your least favorite thing about Alex Bowman? That he took my crew chief. He stole my crew chief. That sucker. Your least favorite thing about Michael McDowell? When he crashed me at Phoenix last year, that's my favorite thing. He's like, man, you're still my crew chief. I'm gonna crash you in the middle of the straightaway. No, I, I like Michael. He did not mean to crash me. Your favorite thing about Michael McDowell? Uh, that he's won the Daytona 500. That's pretty cool, right? But your favorite thing about Alex Bowman? I just don't really like the guy, so I don't know what I could say. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Um, he was kind of in that starting, parking, driving for whoever got a break and has now maximized his break that he got. Five and one Washington State taking on Hawaii next year on the CW, but stick around after that. We are heading to put it all on the line in Las Vegas. Who might be the first of the round of eight to punch their ticket to NASCAR championship weekend here at Phoenix Raceway? Be sure to stay tuned, stick around, keep watching, and stay tuned right here on Sport of Speed. Until I see you next time at Homestead Miami Speedway, make it a great week. Oh, hmm. Hey, uh, whatcha working on? I'm trying to find a bank I can feel good about. Kinda looks like you're doing rocket surgery. Yeah, they have all kinds of requirements and don't give anything back to their customers. It's really hard. Oh! You know, when you join Desert Financial, you get a rewards program that offers a cashback bonus and there's no hidden fees with your free checking. It's really easy. Nice. I think I'm gonna need that bonus. Join today at desertfinancial.com slash betterbanking. Nothing brings people and families together faster than sharing food. Great friends, memories, and good times. For over two generations, Valle Luna has served you the food that brought you together, and we've been proud to do so. We're fortunate to have been a part of so many stories, gatherings, and traditions that continue on today and will tomorrow. Start a tradition of your own. Come taste authentic Sonoran-style food with your family and friends here with us at Valle Luna. Hi, I'm Jody Jackson. I spend a lot of time on the baseball diamonds, but my favorite diamonds are right here at Edie Marshall Jewelers. They have the largest selection of beautiful diamonds in every size, shape, color, and price. Hit a home run this season with the perfect engagement ring. Come on, fellas, get off the bench and visit Edie Marshall Jewelers at Scottsdale Road and Shea Boulevard. Since 1971, Edie Marshall Jewelers, best quality, best selection, and best price. is a Santan Ford announcement. Santan Ford has over 1,600 new cars and trucks in stock. All models are priced for immediate sale to make room for more arrivals. Don't wait. Head to Tim Hovick's Santan Ford and Gilbert. We are Santan Ford.